Rub up your engines! Jesus, how does towing an all-wheel drive vehicle affect any damage to the car since they're all-wheel drive? I was thinking about buying one that was towed by an RV, but I think they just towed it on the ground. Smart move. Don't buy it. All-wheel drive vehicles are not meant to be towed on the ground with all four wheels on the ground, especially if you got an automatic transmission. It should not be spinning if the car isn't running. Now, you can get those dollies where you drive up front wheel drive, so the front wheel drive wheels are on the dolly, and then the rear ones are just spinning because they are not drive wheels. But if you have an all-wheel drive vehicle, they all drive, and the only way to correctly tow it, putting it on top of something, and it's riding, it's not spinning down the road. Now, if you do have a standard transmission, you can have less wear that way. Like if you have a four-wheel drive standard transmission, it's not an automatic transmission with fluid in it that lubricates, it's just splash lubrication, so it won't really hurt anything. But unfortunately, even the modern four-wheel drive systems, they have some complex fluid dynamics inside and transfer cases that they can be damaged by towing on the ground. You really don't want to tow something on the ground behind an RV, unless it's a really old two-wheel drive vehicle, you can just put into neutral and it has a standard transmission. You would never want to tow an automatic transmission vehicle that way. And if you were going to tow a vehicle like that, you'd want a standard transmission, then you really wouldn't have to worry about it because there's not that much damage in an older car. You wouldn't want to do it in a new one, but in an older one. There was a study done. They come to the conclusion that Americans just are not adventurous with their car colors. Now, you do see a lot of odd colored cars here and there. It turns out that Americans stick to just a few car colors. The most popular color in every state was either black or white. <laughs> you can't get any more basic than that, you know? In 2019, more than 87% of the cars were one of five colors. Black, white, gray, silver, and red. Pretty basic colors, you know? <laughs> you don't want to stand out. It's kind of like, you know, fish in the sea, and the small ones are all banded together in a big group. Well, they don't want to stand out, so the sharks can see them and eat them, so you don't want to stand out too much. So you want to look like everybody else when you're driving down the road. And not surprisingly, in the Northeast and the Midwest, the favorite is black. Well, think about it. In the winter, black absorbs heat, so it's going to be a little bit warmer, especially if it's a black interior. In the South, it was the white cars, because they reflect the heat better, because we get hot here. <laughs> I did a thing years ago with my little non-contact laser thermometer gun, and man, it can get hot inside a car. It can get real hot here in the summer. Inside the interiors, I did one I was over 180 degrees Fahrenheit in certain spots. I mean, it can get really hot, so it wouldn't make sense to have a white car here. Miguel Escamilla says, is a repaired hail damaged car still a good buy? Now, it depends on how badly it was damaged with hail. If it was damaged with hail and it was totaled by an insurance company and then fixed, then it will be a rebuild title or a salvage title, and that makes the value of the car go, pfft, even if it was only hail. I've had customers buy hail damaged cars. Some of them bought them with the dings there, and they didn't even care. If you don't care, that's the best way, because what you see is what you get. It runs okay, and it's ding. You can buy it for almost nothing, because it's all damaged up. But let's say it had a bunch of damage, and it was fixed. How do you know if it was fixed right? Body work is very hard to do correctly. They might look really nice now, and then a year or two later, you'll see it's faded, and maybe they use a bunch of Bondo, and then that starts chipping and falling off. If you're buying a vehicle that was a known hail damage, I wouldn't pay that much for it. Now, if you can get a good deal, I have had customers do that. They got good deals. They didn't care that much about the cosmetics, and they drove the car, and they had a lot of fun with it. But I've also had customers that bought hail damaged cars that were all fixed up, and they paid primo value of the car, and then they faded some of the fiberglass, and Bondo would come off, and it looked like crap. So you got to pay a lot less. But look at the title. If the title isn't a clean title, you don't want to pay hardly anything for it, because if you're going to resell it, it's not a clean title, and they don't really have any value that way. A Trillio once says, got a huge fan, first time looking at your advice. Looking about 2005 Ford F250 4x4 diesel. Going to tow some stuff. I don't know if you should get that or an F150. My advice, you're going used. It's 15 years old. I'd say no. Look at F-150s. There's billions of F-150s out there. When you're buying a used diesel, generally, they have been beaten hard. You didn't see how many miles are on it. I'm sure it's got high mileage, because I know it's guys with diesels generally driving a lot of miles. And fixing diesels is uber expensive when they get old and break down. You're probably better off getting a plain old V8 F-150. They can tow, pull stuff all you want. But there's a bunch of them out there. You'll have a better choice. And it's not like a diesel engine. They're easier to fix. There's more guys that know how to work on them. If you want a diesel, you got to spend a lot more money and buy a new one and then keep it for a long time. My customers 
with four diesel trucks. It's businesses for them. They run businesses that they use them in and they see the business, they amortize all the costs and everything and they're real happy with them. But you don't want to buy a used one because there's too much gambling. Henry asks us, Scotty, I'm thinking about buying a 2011 Acura RL with 91,000 miles for 13 grand. Do you have any experience with them? Now they are good cars. But it's a nine-year-old car with 91,000 miles. There's no way that car's worth $13,000. You get no warranty. You get no guarantee. As they get old, Acuras get expensive to repair. I had a customer buy one that had about 30,000 miles more than that. But he only paid $3,500 for the vehicle. And even then, it was a clunker. He ended up getting rid of it in a few months. It started having all kinds of problems. I would not buy that car for that kind of money. Now, if it was whistle clean, didn't have any problems, and it was the original owner, eh, offer him a lot less than that and see how low they'll go. Don't think that you're going to get a good everyday driver that kind of money with 91,000 and nine years old because you can have problems as they age. It's a nine-year-old car, you know. I think something else. Or at least a lot lower mileage for that kind of money. Tim T says, Scotty, I have a parking ticket and it slid through the gap of my power window on a driver's side. I tried to spray stuff to get it out but it's stuck inside. Well, you know, if you're really worried, you could take the door panel out, get inside and take it out. But those things are just made out of paper. Realize that it generally isn't going to hurt anything. It's just going to degrade or it's going to fall to the bottom of the door and then degrade. Because one thing a lot of people don't understand is the inside of your door always gets wet. Water gets by some of the little seals. That's why if you look on the bottom of your door, open your door, crawl under the door, open it, you'll see there's a bunch of little holes. Those are drain holes to drain the water out. So there's always some water going inside. And if you got a piece of paper, in there. Believe me, it's going to get wet and it's going to just decompose over time anyways. Don't worry. It's not really going to hurt anything. But if you're not really worried about it, it's not that hard to take the door panel out. I got a video on how to take the door panel of your car off. Watch that. You can take it apart and take it out if you really want to, but it's not going to hurt anything. Sergio Martinez says, Scotty, I got a Civic 2008 1.8, 180,000 miles. Need an AC compressor, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I found the same Vehicle 2008 in a junkyard with a different body style. Will the compressor work? Well, it should. You know, take yours off, bring it in, and match it up. It should look exactly the same. You don't want to spend a lot of money. Hey, you can just roll your windows down, you know. <laughs> That's even cheaper. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to spend anything. Air conditioning work is always somewhat of guesswork because their sealed system, when something goes wrong, you open up that sealed system, there's all kinds of stuff that can go wrong. If you're going to get a used compressor, you're gambling, but, I mean, you want to gamble. See how much money they want for that used compressor. Because I can get aftermarket compressors for those things made in China that are perfectly decent for sometimes as little as $160. So if they're going to charge $100 for a used one, what the heck? Why not get a new one for a little bit more? You're still going to have to change the dryer because you got to get all the moisture out of the system. So you're going to have to change the dryer, evacuate it all out, and fill it up with refrigerant and AC oil. But you might kind of look at these new aftermarket ones. A lot of times the junkyards, hey, they just look at the dealer new one. They charge you half of what the new one is. And sometimes you can get a brand new one from China cheaper than you can get one used in a junkyard. Ollie Y says, Scotty, I got 2011 Mazda 3, 2 liter with 92,000 miles. Since last week I pushed the brake pedal, it goes down. I pump it, it stays hard. I don't see any leaks anywhere. You know, what do you think's wrong? There's two things that do that. One is the brake master cylinder's going out. It loses the pressure. You pump it up and goes. Because if you don't see leaks anywhere and you're not losing any fluid, then generally it's the master cylinder going out. Now let's say you're losing fluid and you do that, but you can't see it leaking anywhere. Then that's almost always the master cylinder. You pull the master cylinder off and you see it had leaked inside the booster, which you can't see because it's a sealed unit. In that case, you'd replace it and suck all the fluid out of the booster and hope the booster's okay. Now the other reason they can sink if you don't see any leaks anywhere, and especially if you're not losing fluid, is the ABS control module. And those things are uber, uber expensive. You want to pray it's not that going out because they cost a ton of money. You can't even replace them yourself because to bleed the air out of them, you need a $5,000 scan tool like I have to operate the solenoids to bleed the air out of them. It's a real mess. So pray it's just your brake master cylinder. Chief Pontiac says, Scotty, what's your opinion? Evans waterless engine coolant. I've never heard of until recently. It actually does work. It's coolant. There's no water in it. You just pour this Evans waterless coolant in the system and leave it in. Now, it's very expensive. It works from what I've read. A lot of rich guys put it in their fancy vehicles and stuff. It works perfectly fine, but so does regular coolant. <laughs> 
and you're taking if you're gonna buy that expensive stuff anytime there's a leak or something happens to the system and you're gonna buy the super expensive stuff fill it up with let's say you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you get a leak how are you gonna put something in you can't you know you're not gonna find any Evans coolant wireless coolant lying around unless you know collectors of cars or something like use the regular coolant was designed for it works perfectly fine that's more for rich people and fanatics that want to stick something like that in it's it's a specialty thing you know I mean Jay Leno had something about it one time and he collects cars I mean the normal person the coolant in your car works perfectly fine just stick with it <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.